Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and we're going to do a little video here on the topic of electrostatics. This is, uh, I would think, maybe one of the maybe one of the more complicated ideas in electrostatics, and this is going to refer to electric fields. Okay, now. We know that if we have a positive item, that it will act at a distance on a negative item, uh, as well as another positive item. And this this boggled people's minds uh, for a long time. And <clears throat> Michael Faraday was one of the chief people to sort of open this area up and do lots of experiments in the in the in the field of of electricity and uh, electromagnetic fields. So in this case we know that these two items will will react with each other. The formula for this is uh, Coulomb's law and we know that in this case the force of attraction between let's say this positive charge and this negative charge equal to the K constant charged positive times charged negative divided by the distance between them squared. And this is a pretty fundamental law. Um, if you know the quantity of charge, um, charge is going to have the unit of Coulomb, therefore. And sometimes it is symbolized by a C. And then it also symbolized by a Q. It is quite often the unit, like this little variable unit Q. Um, and then the distance squared between them two. Now, in this case, um, we know that around this positive charge, there are what we call magnetic fields and magnetic field lines. And we could spend a little time talking about that, but essentially, um, a positive item uh, would then travel away from this positive charge, and and then the more uh, dense or the closer the lines are together the stronger that field is and therefore the more force would be applied to that particular charge. So <clears throat> for this description of electric fields um, I'm going to sort of make a, a, a comparison to another very common maybe um, another a more common or more, more well understood field and that is the field of or the force of gravity. Now gravity is a little different in the sense that there's no repelling in a gravity and it is um, force of gravity equals K mass of object 1, mass of object 2, and the distance squared. So it, it follows the same same formula. It's uh, same, just a different K value. This is different. And we're not worried about that right now. <clears throat> so I know, for example, if you are on Earth, um, that you are constantly being attracted to Earth. So if you were to place a, an, a ball right here, it would be attracted towards Earth and it would therefore accelerate. We know that the force of this thing is force equals the mass times acceleration. On Earth, this is 9.8 meters per second squared, and this is the mass of the ball. And I'm going to put ball here for this example. And this is the force of attraction. But really, it's the force of attraction between the ball and Earth. So this is kind of a unique scenario where, really, in order to figure out the force of the ball and Earth, we should have used this formula. All right, well, in this case, why don't I need this larger gravitational uh, formula? Because uh, I have the, the mass of the ball, the mass of the Earth, and the distance between them. You know, I didn't need to use any of this. And when I look at the force of uh, the ball coming down, we never even thought about looking at the mass of the Earth. Well, this little knot, the acceleration of gravity here, 
this little guy right here already has all of this stuff built in to it. So it already has to take into account the fact uh, the mass of the Earth, and it also takes into account the distance that you are away in. And obviously, gravity does change where you, based on where you are to the center of the Earth. If you were to go to the top of a large mountain peak and you were to weigh yourself at the top, the force down is less than it is uh, at, you know, let's say sea level. Even if you go to the top of a very tall building, you know, and you weigh yourself on top of that building, you would weigh measurably less than you would on the ground. So this is taking into account that these things are already given. Okay, so the <clears throat> for this situation, we don't care about the strength of the, the mass of the Earth or the distance you're away from it. Now, this applies also to, let's say, electric field. Okay, a couple things we know here. I know that if I have a positive charge here. I'm going to call this positive charge Q. And I know that if I place a negative charge right here, I'm going to call this uh, little little Q, then it's going to be accelerated towards the positive charge. The formula for this is the force of the attraction is equal to the charge Q times the electric field intensity. And sometimes we'll label this as a capital E. This is mimicking this same formula right here. So in this case, the mass is equates to the charge. And A, the acceleration, is really kind of mimicking the strength of the gravitational field. And the force is obviously the force applied between those two objects. <clears throat> so, again, E is symbolizing the electric field intensity. So, in this situation, we're taking a force and we're, we're taking a, uh, a charge and applying a force to it and it moves. <laughs> Okay, so I can rearrange this guy. The electric field intensity is equal to the force, which is in newtons, and the charge, which is in coulombs. So the units of a um, electric field intensity would be a newton per coulomb. And this really what it comes down to in this situation. Uh, it comes down to the fact that it's not, it's just a proportionalize. You'll say, well, if it's, it's proportioned to base off one coulomb of charge. If you had, if you have one coulomb of charge, then what would be, what is your force? And that's all it really talks about. That's kind of how we use this. Now, again, the original Coulomb's law has this guy, which incorporates not only the charge of the big Q and the charge of the little Q, but also the distance and the K and everything else. So, well, why doesn't this thing have it? Well, again, for the distance and for the charge of this particular large Q, um, they're both incorporated. They're both already given in inside the problem. We don't need to worry about those two because they're both there. Okay, they're both already calibrated into the problem. All right. So in this case, all we're saying is that if we have an example of this, saying okay, we have a field of some amount. We don't know what it is. Okay, I'm going to use a negative charge, and this negative charge is placed inside this negative field. Okay, and you could say okay, well. If the, thing, if the charge of Q is 1.0 e to the negative sixth um, coulombs, and so at this point we need to be given more information. So okay, well, okay, well the force of attraction between the two are is 0.001 newtons. Okay, 
again, this just becomes a proportional proportionalization. If uh, you know, if 0 0.001 newtons gives me 1.0 e to the negative six uh, coulombs of charge, then what would be the amount of newtons for one coulomb of charge? And that's all it is. We you could use a a linear proportion, or you could just say, okay, um, the electrical intensity, I should say the electric field intensity is equal to the force per unit charge C. And you could just plug in your force being 0 0.001 newtons divided by your 1.0 e to the negative sixth coulomb's charge, and you get your basically your number of newtons per one coulomb, and that is your answer. Alright, so this is one type of problem, and this is, uh, I'd say, this formula right here is pretty important. Okay, now what if we have? Let's go to a different page here. Let's say we have a a could be a body of a, a planet, you know, which has a mass. Okay, and let's say we have a charge, some charge that's positive has some a unit of positivity. This guy is going to attract all sorts of mass. And this guy is going to attract negatives, and it will repel positives. Okay, so this guy works off of the force equals the uh, k mass of the let's say the planet. Planet. Let's go mass x mass x over the distance squared, and this guy right here is force equals k. Um, big Q, little Q, distance squared. All right. So, what if we want to know hypothetically? Okay, what um, what would be the the force, or what would be the electric field on something at s some greater point? What if I put a charge here? What would be that? What would be that force of attraction to this guy? Well, same thing for Earth. The mass works just fine too. But what if we don't? What if we don't have uh, a charge or in a place like, like this charge here? Would commonly the little Q is commonly referred to as a test charge. Okay, little Q is always referred to a test charge. So this is your test charge, and this is referred to as your source charge. So is it possible to know without a test charge what would be the electric field intensity at that point? So what you could do now again remember um, that the electric field intensity is equal to the amount of force applied to a hypothetical one coulomb. Let's, let's see here, one coulomb test charge. So if I wanted to, I can even use this equation: force. I should say I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it out from force to electric field intensity equals K Q over distance squared and I'm going to put for Q, little Q I'm going to drop in a 1. That's 1 coulomb. So this allows me, it changes the force to electric field intensity because electric, electric field intensity is just a force for a given one coulomb test charge. Well, there you go. Now this is therefore rewritten like this. Electric field intensity equals K source charge over distance squared. Another this allows us to essentially find the electric field intensity. Again, it's just a force on a given one coulomb test charge. And there we go. Right. Um, another way to get this thing algebraically is to say, well, if I take my two formulas I have so far, which are um, electric field intensity is the force uh, per coulomb. I'm going to put a C here. I'll leave it there. That's our test charge. And then I have this guy, force equals K, big Q, little q over distance squared. Resolve this guy to force equals electric field intensity times Q. Set these two equal to each other. I'm going to get electric field intensity equals um, electric field intensity times Q equals 
k big q little q over distance squared and of course rearrange this moving q below and the q's will cancel and you get electric field intensity equals k q over distance squared same as before okay. um, all right so these are essentially formula number one big time formula here um, and then we have this formula right here which is the same as that guy that one has been utilized and of course uh, those are both looking for electric field intensity but this guy right here Coulomb's law is the is real important as well okay. so uh, things we want to be able to do we want to be able to um, utilize any of those equations okay. now here's a quick little challenge question here let's say we take a um, positive electric field so we got ourselves a positive source and I place a negative charge in this thing. The force of attraction between uh, these two guys is equaling x. So if I were to double my ch charge, what is my new force? Okay, and what is my new electric field? So let's say the electric field intensity initially was equal to um, I. Right? That's going to represent my electric field intensity. So if I were to double this guy, what would be my new force between these guys? And what's my new electric field intensity? Alright, well, you'll note that the electric field intensity is only based off of the source charge. Okay, now, but, but it takes two to tangle. So this thing has some sort of an electric field intensity uh, coming off of it here, and really it's 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 not a matter of this source charge, although they're both connected. So it's like saying, what's your what's your mass of Earth? Well, my mass of Earth is 220 pounds. Well, if you gained weight, well then really how do you know you didn't gain weight, but the Earth did? You know, one of you two has to gain mass. So we don't ever think of the Earth gaining mass. So we, we, we can think of it in terms of that Earth has a gravitational field that's kind of constant. We only think of ourselves, but really it's both. So if I want to know the actual force between them, I would need to use force equals constant K, and it would be Q, little q over distance squared. But we do know that if I were to just double the little q, that this mass break would be caused F to double. And therefore, the force is 2x. Okay. What about our electric field intensity? Well, we do know that at this point, um, my force, uh, electric field intensity is um, force, well, the force is equal to the electric field intensity times the chest charge. And of course, I doubled this times 2, and I doubled this times 2. Therefore, the electric field actually stayed constant because the electric field is generated by our source charge. Kind of an important distinction to be made. All right. Lots of important stuff here. Thank you very much.